Hi everybody, welcome back to the studio. Today I am working in my napkin journal and I'm going to paint these whimsical girls on top of a background that I created with a napkin. So I just started with that little journal that I had dedicated to just doing napkin art. I'm just starting with napkins for every background and I chose that napkin that has butterflies and ferns and leaves on it and I'm just going to get that put down with some matte medium. I have already separated the white ply from the back of the printed part of the napkin and I'm going to speed through a lot of this and you will see it gets a little wonky at the end because my camera was on time lapse and I don't know you guys how fast time lapse goes but it was even faster than this sped up version that I intentionally sped up so I slowed the time lapse down and it's just kind of wonky looking but you can still see what I'm doing so anyways here I'm just putting the napkin down with matte medium and taking the excess off from around the edges of the pages and I did get a little tear there at the top and then I decided, okay, I want this whole thing to look veiled or less bright. So I brought the white ply that I had pulled off of the back of the napkin. I brought that back in. And now I'm going to put that on top of um, the napkin, the printed part of the napkin that I already put down. And the reason that I didn't put it down, like say upside down or backwards or whatever, is... To do it all in one step only one of those plies would have been glued to the pages so then eventually whatever was on top would have come off so you got to do them one at a time but it worked good it was exactly what I wanted because I didn't want it to look that bright and I wanted to build in a bunch of texture so I wadded the napkin up and then put it down and just embraced the wrinkles I wanted lots of wrinkles for lots of texture so just getting the edges torn off. And it just looks a lot better. So then I decided it needs to be even lighter. So I'm just going to put some gesso down just to lighten it up pretty much overall, but just kind of in a random way. And I'm just kind of dry brushing. There's no liquid or anything in my brush, just the gesso. And I'm just going really lightly at first, hitting the tops of all of those wrinkles on the napkin. And then I went heavier around the edges. And now I have some Glimmer Mist in rose gold. And it has a lot of that shimmery mica in it. So you have to mix it up really, really good. I just wanted to start bringing some color back in a more controlled way. I didn't want the bright colors of the napkin, but yet I still wanted to see parts of the napkin showing through the background. So I sprayed it, and then I took the sprayer out and flung some on there. And now I have some color wash in green tea. That's also by Tattered Angels. I love this stuff. And I'm just going to splatter that on with an old brush, like really splatter it. And the odd thing that I found when I was doing this is even with the matte medium on top of that napkin waste, the napkin still seemed to absorb this color wash quite a bit which I liked because it was just a real pale green. But I'm, what I'm trying to do is bring some color to the foreground that is in the napkin. So that's why I'm going with the kind of purple tone and the green. And I just want to smush that and I felt like it needed some more. So I just took the sprayer out and used the end of the sprayer to dab some more on and dried it all off and then back to the gesso this time with my fingers and just getting sort of a cloudy effect wiping it back a little bit with the baby wipe now i have some modeling paste and a stencil 
The stencil is by the Crafters Workshop, and I believe it's called Specimens. And I'm just going to get those images down in modeling paste. This modeling paste is really light and really fast and easy to dry with the heat tool. If you get it too hot, it does bubble up, which sometimes that's not a bad thing. You get kind of a raised effect, but it's nice that you don't have to wait for it to dry on its own. So I just decided to put that on each side. And now I have some high flow acrylic from Golden in green gold. And I'm just going to get some green in the foreground. And then I took my Stabilo All, my black one, and I'm just doing some mark making, just making some random marks. Most of that ends up getting totally covered up in the end, but I like to do it. Some fluid media, uh, yeah, fluid deco art media acrylic in yellow ochre, I believe. And bringing some brightness. It's a little too bright, so I'll remedy that in a minute. Losing my grunge look. So I grab my graphite powder. This stuff makes a real mess, but I love it. And then I have an old makeup brush, real soft brush. And I'm just dipping it into that little pot of graphite powder. And my intention was to get it down in the crevices of that modeling paste, which worked really good right there. But then I kind of make a mess because I have too much on the brush. And it's just, just too much. And it's like, okay, this isn't going to work. So then I grabbed a baby wipe. I thought well, maybe I can just blot some of it up. And yeah, that was a bad idea. But it's okay. It turned out okay anyways. It did go down into those butterflies, as you can see. And then I did the other side too, but with a lighter hand on the brush. This is a purple acrylic that I watered down just to make a wash in a spray bottle. But I just decided to use the wash in my brush and get some drips going down the page. And then I just softened it back here and there and mopped up the heavier puddles. Leftover gesso on my mat there was just kind of calling to me, so I grabbed an old credit card and just decided to use it up and scrape it down the page and just get some white spots. And then I liked it, so <laughs> I had to get some more out and do it on both sides. So those poor butterflies, they went from light to dark, back to light. This is where my camera got stuck on time lapse and I did not realize it. I had let that background dry overnight. And then my aunt passed away, you guys. Her funeral is tomorrow. And I had thought overnight, what do I want to do on top of this background? So this morning I thought, I'm just going to do a couple of like whimsical paper dolls. One representing her and one representing me. She was like just 15 years older than I am. So growing up, she was a lot of fun to be around and she babysat me. And then later on in life, her and I partied together. We had a, a good time, and I'm just really, really going to miss her, but she passed from cancer. So anyways, not to dwell on the sad part, but I thought, okay, I'm just going to make a large paper doll on one side and a slightly smaller one on the other side just, just to remember her and 
just because that's what I felt like doing. So I took a Graphitone pencil and went around those paper pieces that I laid down. And now I'm just activating that Graphitone with water. It's similar to charcoal, kind of a cross between charcoal and graphite, but it's water reactive and acts kind of like a watercolor, but you can see it made a really nice shadow and brought that figure to the forefront. And then I just, her face was cut out of music paper and I just grabbed the Neocolor 2 in, I think it's apricot, and I'm just muting back the pattern on the paper a little bit giving it a little more of a flesh tone a little more on her face so then I grabbed that color wash again and did the sleeves, went over the sleeves with that color wash because the sleeves were not cut out. I just drew them on with the Graphitone pencil. So the color wash is mixing with the graphite. They got kind of dark, but I still liked it. Then I grabbed three colors of um, fluid acrylic for her hair, and that is Burnt Sienna. And on the, the right side is the shadow side, so it mixed with that Graphitone pencil, and that worked well because I got an instant shadow there. And then I went with a burnt umber to get a little bit of darkness and a slightly thinner brush, just a liner brush, just to get some darkness and lines in her hair and the shadow around her face, where her hair meets her face. And these are by no means um, portraits, you guys. They're meant to be whimsical and just quick, fun girls. And then I used that yellow ochre just to get some lighter tones in there as well. I think it's actually yellow iron oxide, maybe. Transparent yellow iron oxide, not yellow ochre. Then I just used what was left on the mat on my finger just to get some color onto her skirt. This I wish I hadn't done, but I used that turquoise phalo to do the bodice of her dress. And I don't know why I grabbed that, you guys, because it really doesn't go with the colors in the background or anything other than I like it, but I wish I hadn't done it that color. But it is what it is, so... It's down there now, and it's okay. I mean, it's a journal, so it's all right. And then I just kind of played with the water in my brush and adjusted some of the shadows. And I thought, well, maybe some dots on her bodice will make it seem a little less turquoise. So I used the yellow again and put dots using my stylus. Sorry, I just moved my microphone away from my face. Um, used the stylus and just put some dots there on her sleeves and on the bodice of her dress. Still not happy with the turquoise. It is looking a little more green now though. And then I just added some shadows and some wrinkles with the Graphitone and activated it with that color wash instead of just water and I got a little more of a green tone. And I grabbed a couple of art crayons and put some highlights on her face and some rosy cheeks just with a little bit of water on my brush. Broke my Graphitone pencil as I was sharpening it. And then I just used that to draw the face on and then I just have a tiny detail brush. I'm just going to activate that and play around with that until I get it the way I want it. So 
And once I get her done, I went off camera and just did the second girl. I, I was going to put dots. I did put dots on with my fine liner bottle, but they were too big. So I just wiped them off and grabbed my white Posca pen. It's a fine line Posca pen and added some white dots with that instead. And a couple little marks here and there highlights and she's basically done. So then I went off camera and did the other, the smaller girl on the other side. And that's representing me. So she has kind of a sad look on her face. And then I had that little poem that seemed very fitting. And I went around the edges with um, that green oxide ink. So that's it. A quick one. I hope you enjoyed watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching the process. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it if you did that. And share this video out to your friends and your Facebook groups. And in the meantime, go make some art. Bye.